Are we live? There we go. No, I don't think so. Now it looks like we're live. We are. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming this morning. We're excited to have you. Uh, reminder, this event is being put on by the Giraffe Conservation Foundation and Alimalia. We're happy to have you here. I'm Luciana Fauhaber, and I'm going to be moderating the day today. We know it's early, 10 a.m. We have 82 people joining so far. Uh, we're so excited that you woke up early and having your coffee with us and learning a little bit more about these amazing animals and how we can make sure that they're still part of this world as we uh, live through these days. Um, a reminder, if you have a question, please make sure to type the question on your comment section. We're going to be uh, compiling them for our Q&A at the end. So please make sure that you ask your questions and we're also gonna be sharing the microphone if you have questions that you might be able to ask them directly. But just in case, make sure that they are posted on the comments section. Also, at the beginning of every talk and every panel, we're gonna have the link for donations. Um, if you can, please be generous. We're trying to save these animals. We're happy to have you here. Um, and you can follow that link. We're also going to be emailing this link later at the end of this day so that you can uh, maybe at a later date uh, continue to support this amazing cause. Um, the first person we have with us today who is going to be talking is Steph. Steph is amazing. She is the co-director and co-founder uh, co of the Giraffe Conservation Foundation and coordinates the GCF's day-to-day -day businesses, including liaison with conservation partners and donors throughout the world. So that's not an easy job. <laughs> Um, with an MSc in environmental engineering, she's a skilled and experienced environmental manager who has successfully worked in diverse working cultures in multidisciplinary teams within the private, government, and NGO sector of three countries and continents, Africa, Australia, and Europe. Um, in this session, you'll find out more about giraffes, discuss why we should care about these gentle giants and beautiful creatures, and what's the real threats to their future? And what can be done to make a difference? So again, thanks for coming. We are now at 136 attendees. Thanks for being here. Steph, I'll give you the floor. Thanks, Luciana. And uh, you look absolutely amazing. I find I feel a bit underdressed here. <laughs> so <laughs> I think wing it by talking about giraffe. So yeah, first of all, welcome to everyone. It's really exciting. This is our first online event. And um, yeah, Luciana told you who I am. I saw some, quickly had to squeeze before, I saw some familiar names. So it's great to see some of you here online who I've emailed with or met in person before. But um, yeah, first of all, I want to thank our presenting partners, Animalia, and particularly James and Annelise, who have helped us set up this event and then Luciana for emceeing. So thank you very much. And um, yeah, let's get started. So I'm based in, a bit too quick, James, <laughs> just the last photo, please. So um, yeah, I'm sitting here in Windhoek, the capital of Namibia, not Nambia. Um, and James is running the presentation from California. So I hope we can make this work, but uh, please bear with us if we sometimes jump back and forth a little bit with the slides. Uh, unfortunately, our internet here is a little bit challenging at the moment. So as part of our job, most of us from the GCF team normally travel around the world and meet with you guys and other giraffe enthusiasts to talk about giraffe and, and share information about the plight of giraffe. But obviously, that has become quite challenging in the last 12 months. Um, so this is when the idea came up to try something new. And this is what we are doing now. Next slide, please. But uh, I can assure you that we are still working hard to save giraffe. Our team has been amazing in these challenging times um, and we had to, to adapt. We found new ways of saving giraffe, um, even in this new reality without the ability to travel for long times. We could only work in, in the countries where we were based in, but most of our team is based in Africa. So we are still busy saving giraffe. So don't worry about that. But uh, before I sound like a proud mum, and let me not digress here, we are here to talk about giraffe. But when I say that, giraffe conservation is a family effort for us. So here's a photo of uh, my family. Um, some of you might know them. There's Julian, my husband, and our amazing kids, Luca and Molly, who probably have seen more giraffes in their life than they wanted to. 
Um, Julian has a PhD in giraffe. Uh, he is one of the world's experts in giraffe conservation. And I'm married into it. But in the last few years, I have picked up a few things myself. So for over 10 years, we have been doing giraffe conservation in our spare time while holding up proper jobs, earning money, um, and did it yeah, in the evenings. Julian is an Australian with a background in land management and ecology. Uh, I'm German and I'm an engineer. So what a great team to run a conservation organization. Next slide, please. Um, but GCF has grown in the last few years from a couch run organization to, to a proper organization with a passionate and uh, very capable small team. Um, we are now 19 people based in six different countries. And interestingly, we represent 11 different nationalities. So we are quite a motley crew, quite a mix, but together we really uh, make a difference. And it's a, it's a really fun work environment to work with. So this is my giraffe family. Next slide. And we are, I have to admit, we are spreading ourselves rather thin at times. Um, we currently work in 16 African countries. Here, just a little map to give you a rough idea about it. Um, but we still think of ourselves as a small organization. We don't have massive administrative overheads, uh, but we have quite a big impact. So you'll hear a little bit more about some of our projects on the ground while we talk. Next slide. But in the end, we realize that conservation really is about people. And GCF is a networking organization. We don't plan to do everything ourselves. We don't want to do everything ourselves. We aim to, to bring people together and to help others to empower Africans to save giraffe in Africa. Next slide. But back to giraffe. Giraffe are probably the most iconic animals in the world. I'm sure most of you will agree and everybody loves giraffe. Giraffe are actually in trouble and their numbers have been declining by almost 30% over the last three decades. We have, they have lost almost 90% of their habitat uh, in the last 300 years. And hardly anyone knows, everyone knows that elephants are in trouble and need our help, but did you know that there is one giraffe for every four elephants? But there's also a lot of positive signs. There's a lot of work being done now in different countries um, by our partners and us, and together we are really making a difference. So we are seeing some really positive stories and we really like sharing these as well. Next slide. But unfortunately, that doesn't mean that giraffes are quite out of the woods yet. They really need our help and uh, some species are really in trouble. So why is this? Why exactly are giraffe in trouble? The bottom line is the problem are we, people. Next slide. There are simply more and more people who need more and more space to live and produce food, and there's less space for all wildlife, including giraffe. Next slide. Existing habitat is cut up or fragmented by settlements, infrastructure, like here a chain line, roads. Next slide. And in some areas, poaching or illegal hunting is, is a real problem. And let me not start talking about climate change and other issues like civil war and civil unrest. So this silent extinction has been going on before our eyes for, for many years, and the world has been largely unaware. So it's really great to see all of you online and to see this growing interest in giraffe conservation. Next slide. Huh. And this is when the technology fails. There was about supposed to be a sound now, um, a roaring sound, but um, never mind. Um, we'll try to put that online later, maybe if, it, um, if that's possible. So because what I wanted to say is that did you know that giraffe actually can make sounds? Many people think that giraffe are silent, that they're mute, but they make a lot of different noises, including a roaring sound. And this is just an indicator of, of how little we know about giraffe. Until recently, we didn't know much about their taxonomy either. This should really be one of the most 
basic things to know about an animal, shouldn't it? There's still confusion and we have been, we as GCF have been at, at the forefront of helping to better understand how Together with our partners, we have collected and analyzed DNA samples, so skin samples um, of giraffe from all over Africa. We have collected more than a thousand samples in the last 20 years. You see a little dart there, it's a dropout dart, and you see a tiny little giraffe skin sample. And that is really for the geneticist, the, the holy grail. Next slide. So we are now confident to say that there is four different species of giraffe. You see them here, the Maasai, Northern, Reticulated and Southern giraffe and a few different subspecies, but I'm not going to go into technical details. So if you want to learn more about that, just have a look at our website and then you will find a lot of more information on that. Um, and we are still finding out more. Um, we are still learning more and we are getting more in detailed information on giraffe speciation. To the untrained eyes, a giraffe is just a giraffe. They all look the same, don't they? But they don't actually. So you, they have different coat patterns. They have different numbers of ossicones. Their distribution is very different. And there's so much more that actually differs. But in the end, you can only tell the difference between the different species by looking at the genetics. So why do we know that it's four different species? And this is a very difficult and rather esoteric concept, but the research has shown that giraffe, the different species of giraffe split from each other about one to 1.5 million years ago. Just to put it into perspective, humans evolved, what, about 200,000, 300,000 years ago? So that is quite a long time. To compare it with other species, the difference between the different species of giraffe is bigger than the difference between a polar bear and a brown bear. But does it really matter how many species there are? Actually, it does for their conservation and for their management. Next slide. So how many giraffe are there in Africa in total? And this is a work in progress. Some of you who have been following us for many years see that our numbers have changed recently again, and a few years ago they changed. So it's really an evolving number because we continue to work with our partners to find out more. We add surveys, we compile numbers, we improve methodologies. And our latest number that we actually talking about for the first time tonight um, is that we now think there is about 122,500 giraffe remaining in Africa. This is actually an increase from by almost 10% in the last five, six years, which is pretty amazing. And it's great news, but it's also very important to keep in mind that this is largely due to better counting methods. And Michael will talk about that a little bit more. He is one of our chief giraffe counters, so he knows what he's talking about. So still, 122,500 giraffe is still not many. It still is one giraffe to every four elephants. So the main takeaway message for you from this is that three out of the four species of giraffe are in serious trouble. Next slide. So GCF is a science-based organization and all our decisions are based on solid science. As I said, Michael will talk about that uh, in more detail. He is a, a postdoc that, that we share with the Smithsonian Institute. So we work with very, very skilled and clever partners. Um, and it, research is, is very important. However, we have realized that science alone is not going to save giraffe. It serves a purpose to inform science and to help us make the best possible decisions. But if we really want to save giraffe, we have to act and we have to act now. 
So we as GCF see our collaborative efforts with partners as an investment for the future of giraffe, Africa and its people. Next slide. By conserving giraffe, we are not only securing a future for this iconic species, but we are also protecting the land on which they live for future generations. And the knock-on effect for other species is boundless. So before you hear more from our team, um, I would like you to, to watch a short video. I'm just here to, to set the scene, to introduce everyone. Um, and give you a little bit of an introduction to GCF. So we are really, really excited to be here. And with your support and actions, we feel that we can really make a difference and save giraffe in Africa before it's too late. James, if you could play the video, that would be great. The next technical challenge. So I will just talk a little bit more while James tries to sort the technical problems out. So as we said, this is the first time that we are trying something like this and we are really, really excited to have a skilled partner like um, Animalia who can actually help us with the tech on the technical side because um, we as a team have been talking for quite a while and said it would be really great to... Um, sorry. Hi everyone, seems like we're having some kind of uh, technical difficulties and remember that um, stuff is in Africa. So there might be some network issues. We're trying to figure it out. Thanks for your comments on the comment section. Um, I see that you guys are also wondering uh, what's going on, but sounds like we're regaining picture. There she is. Yeah, I'm just, I'm going to actually, the video is available on YouTube. So I'm going to post the link on YouTube so you can maybe also just go and watch it in your own time at some stage. Um, yeah, sorry for the technical problems. Hey, um, yeah. sorry, sorry, it looks like about half the people can see the video fine. It depends on their okay. browser, browser settings. Um, okay. I'm just gonna try playing it in a different way to see if that makes a difference. Okay. But yeah, like about, yeah, yeah. Give me one second just to try it. See if this works. Can you see it, Steph? Um, let me just. Uh, yeah. Now. Yeah. Looks like it.
So it doesn't look like there's sound. I'm not sure if I see what you see. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm really sorry for that. So some technically technical challenges. I have posted the um, video links in the chat though. There's a short one uh, and a long one. So maybe in your own time, have a look at some stage. Um, it's just a little bit of a summary of what um, GCF is doing and uh, introducing our organization. Um, it looks like I have to now um, spend some more time with you, which is fantastic. Um, but uh, I don't have more slides for you, but uh, we can just chat a little bit. What I can tell you that um, one of the talks today was supposed to be given by Dr. Sarah Ferguson, our um, wildlife veterinarian who is working for us in Uganda. Um, she's at the moment in Chad and was supposed to return to the capital today, but unfortunately her flight was delayed. So instead of her, Julian will be giving her talk um, and uh, he will be filling in. But uh, there's at least some photos of her, so it will be great to see her. But she sends her regards and uh, is really disappointed that she couldn't join us today. But um, as I said, this is the first time we are trying something like this. So there was... Uh, had to be some technical challenges, but I'm sure we can overcome it. And it's really, really great to see so many of you online. I see it's now 250, 253 people. This is really amazing. Um, and so many um, names we know, which is fantastic. So thank you so much for joining us and for being interested in giraffe. It's great to see more interest. It's really has changed over the last few years. There's become more and more interest in giraffe, which is really encouraging for us and our team because um, we really feel that we are making a difference, not only by raising awareness, but by working with partners in now 16 different countries. And we are really creating more interest and more enthusiasm for giraffe conservation. So that is really uh, most important because, as I said, we don't want to do everything by ourselves. We really um, it's very important for us to work closely with partners, um, either partners who work already locally and support them to just include giraffe into their programs and um, or who have expertise in other fields and where we can find synergies in working together, which is really, really exciting. But I think we are almost at the end. Uh, yeah, there'll be, um, in about in two minutes, there'll be a link that shows up for everybody. You can tap to go to the next session. Um, just to fill those two minutes, Steph, I have a quick question for you. Um, yeah. What's a common, what do you think one of the most common misunderstood things is about giraffes? Most common misunderstood things. Um, one of the things what I mentioned, that giraffe are mute. A lot of people think they're mute. And a lot of people think... They're everywhere. Um, and that is really um, quite um, shocking because, as I said, most people don't really realize that giraffe are in trouble. And they always ask us, why is that? Why don't people know that giraffe are in trouble? And I think it really is that they are such iconic animals. So they are used in so much advertisement. So you see them regularly um, on TV and everywhere. And in a lot of the, the bigger game parks, giraffe are quite prominent, so it's great to see them there. Um, but people don't realize that these are few populations and that most of these populations are relatively small. Um, also, another factor that plays into it is that a lot of safari visitors come to southern Africa, and uh, in southern Africa, giraffe are doing really well. So the Southern African, uh, the southern giraffe is, is now almost 50% of all giraffe in Africa as, as southern giraffe. So when you come to on safari, you actually see them quite often. Awesome. So we're just getting the next speaker is going live right now. Um, and then as soon, it will be Arthur. As soon as they're live, we should be able to clink over. Cool. And um, yeah, Arthur is our East Africa coordinator. He is uh, based in Nairobi, capital of Kenya, as you will all know. And uh, Arthur is actually from Rwanda, so he brings another nationality into our team. 
All right. It looks like everyone has to pop up. We can't see it, Sniff, but um, okay. the attendees can. There's a pop-up on the page to click into the next session. If you can just go ahead and click that, then you'll jump over to the next session. And you'll see stuff again in the panel. So don't worry. Yes. You get, okay. you get, another, you get another chance with stuff. See you all later. Bye.